the dreamers of the world look to the night sky for inspiration. Oscar Wilde is famously quoted saying that, We are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. And those of us looking at them through a telescope are able to see more than just the stuff of dreams, but the very real shape of things in space. So, telescopes our windows to the universe. So I think it's kind of difficult to pinpoint an exact invention date, but a lot of times the credit's given to a Dutch eyewear maker named Hans Lippershey mm -hmm. in 1608, which yes. corresponds very closely to when Galileo eventually made it famous. Yes, yeah. that's true, right. Galileo is the name that we all know, mm -hmm. connected to telescopes, and you know, that's really a function of the kind of work that Galileo did with a telescope that was so Remarkable, yeah. groundbreaking. You know, I can imagine the list of curse words that came out of his mouth in Italian when he first saw Jupiter through a telescope. Absolutely. For something that was not very big and very simple, I think it made things only three times bigger than our eyes would naturally see it. And oh, it was yes. enough to give him enough information to prove these things to the Western world, at least at that time, still being a bit more geocentric. Well, since then, telescopes have really made huge strides. They've changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, we started out with these refractor telescopes like Galileo's. Very simple design. You know, you just look through the back of the tube straight out the front, and it uses lenses. And right up here, there's a, where this orange band is, there's a lens that sits right there and collects the light and brings it down to the eyepiece. But when you start making these really large, it becomes challenging to make them accurately. And as it turns out, it's simpler and less expensive to make a big reflecting mirror. And the reflecting mirror works just like, you know those bathroom mirrors that we have at home that give you some magnification? Exactly. That's what this is. It's a couple of mirrors put together that bring the collected light to your eye. Right. They use an eyepiece to magnify the image that's created, and then you see these really beautiful sights of Things that I think Galileo, frankly, would be stunned if he could see what they look like today. Do you have a preference between reflectors and refractors? Well, you know, I really like reflectors because mm -hmm. of their capability to gather light, but I, I kind of have a shine on for the uh, refracting telescopes. Sure, yeah. They both will see just about the same thing, although the reflector will bring you more light from dim objects like galaxies, nebulae, things like that, mm -hmm. while the refractor might be really good for you if you want to look at things like the moon or planets or individual stars, things like that. I have a reflector. However, I will say I have found uh, refractors to be slightly easier. And my friends, and for my friends who are really into astrophotography, generally speaking, it's always through a refractor. And also portability. I think refractors tend to be a bit better that way too. <laughs> I think something we ought to point out about this that really does help us understand the value of being able to make a reflector better or easier, all of the big telescopes around the world used for research purposes, those are all reflecting telescopes. Right. You know, because we can make bigger mirrors that gather more light, and that's the whole purpose of the telescope. You know, telescopes are really nothing more than a big light bucket, bucket yeah. grabs okay. light, brings it down to the detector, which for Galileo and the rest of us since that time has been our eye. Mm -hmm. And now in modern telescopes, there are packages of electronics mm -hmm. on the back of a telescope that interpret that information or collect that data for us that we can then use to understand what's happening way out in the Absolutely. deep universe. Absolutely. And you brought up that a good point about data. I think most people are under the idea that astronomy these days is you just sitting at the base of a telescope looking at stuff. Well, and that's the romantic sketching. idea, I know, sure. You wish, but now it's mostly just data analysis. I've seen those computers. I don't know what they're saying, but that's what it is. And you know that romantic <laughs> idea of somebody being there at the eyepiece of the telescope mm -hmm with a smoking jacket, smoking a pipe kind of thing. No, that's out the window. Nowadays, research astronomers can collect their data from the biggest telescopes right at home in their offices or in their living rooms, exactly. sitting in their pajamas even. That's the, that's the goal. That is the goal. 
When you look at the whole light spectrum, there's a lot of light that we can't see, like ultraviolet or infrared or radio. Right. And there are specific telescopes for those portions too. They all give you parts to paint a whole story. Right. And working together allows you to see the universe for what it is, but we can only see so much. And so, you know, we have massive radio telescopes that allows us to understand the story of radio waves of that specific object. One of the most profound things I think that has happened in recent times, as in 2019, <laughs> was the image of the black hole. The first image we've ever gotten of a black hole, yes. all thanks to telescopes. Oh, yes, very cool. That mm -hmm. was done by this telescope called the Event Horizon Telescope. Great name. It is a great name, <laughs> except it's a little bit of a misnomer because it makes you think that we're talking about one single discrete instrument. And that's not actually the case. This is actually a situation where there are a number of radio telescopes located in different places across the planet. And what happens is through mathematics, the astronomers can synthesize or pull together all of the different images from each of the telescopes and synchronize them in time so that you have an observation that has much higher resolution. Well, this telescope was used in that way to, for the very first time, image a black hole. Now, when we think of image, often we're thinking about, oh, it's a picture. He took a camera and took a picture. Right. No, it's not like that at all. The data of the intensity of the radio energy coming from the black hole was collected and then put together and then compared in a way that allowed us to see the different intensities of radio energy that could then be mapped out in a way that we can see as a picture. So when you think about over 400 years of telescope technology, mm. we've come a long way. And that makes me think, I cannot wait to see where telescope technology takes us in the future. <laughs>